This episode started off uh, on the slower side, but boy, things escalated quickly, and it was just balls to the wall, pedal to the metal, action to the end. Hunter Hunter, episode 52, Assault and Impact. Are you kidding me? Seriously? Holy freaking... Well, hello, my brothers and sisters and hunters and Zoldic family members of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and just magical and life-changing tale that is Hunter Hunter 2011. Now, our last episode, of course, saw us with things escalating very quickly as uh, Crollo Lucifer, uh, the head of the Phantom Troop, uh, pretty much just told everybody, hey, you know, have at it, and I want you to just take everybody out between where you're at and where we're at, which is considered the cemetery building, they call it, uh, but it's a, it's a large hotel-like building. We know that Crollo obviously is inside that building, and we know that the shit is hitting the fan, right? Uh, so that's, that's of course, how the episode ended off. And the episode goes and picks up, and I thought it was pretty cool. There's there's a couple of spots where you go and you see some of these assassins, uh, excuse me, that were hired by the, the Dons, by the Mafia uh, Dons, um, you know, to go in and obviously combat and take out the Phantom Troop. And you, you see a couple of them, just, you know, dead bodies or ones that wind up dying. Uh, and, and apparently... It, it, it would seem evident to me that it's because Crollo is in the building, and this dude, we don't really know what his powers are exactly, but uh, we just know pff, he's on another level, boy. He is on another level. So, uh, as the uh, as the episode winds up progressing, the, the first part of it, believe it or not, is actually pretty slow. There's all this chaos and confusion going on outside because there's just, uh, mafia members are just getting mowed down. Police are getting mowed down. Anybody that is in the way is getting mowed down. Um, by Obviously by the Phantom Troop, and it is cool seeing all of their abilities in action. Uh, we do get a brief uh, brief respite where we check in with um, with Killua and Gone, and they're actually on a subway train that gets stopped because they're all transportation, everything's getting stopped in New York, New City. This is like Godzilla attacking the city, okay? Except for Godzilla is like, you know, 11 or 12 smaller dudes that's like just fucking everybody up. There's explosions going on everywhere. It's crazy, right? So, uh, so anyway, going in Killaway after a little while, they get tired of sitting in the, uh, you know, sitting in, in there in the, uh, in the stopped train in the subway car, and they wind up taking off because they get no reception on their phones and wind up coming up above ground. Um, while this is all happening, we wind up seeing a, a brief check-in over here with uh, with Light and Estrad, and uh, and of course Kropka, and uh, and they're you know sitting by Neon's bedside, and he's freaking because because uh, Melody and Basho aren't there yet, and one of his guys is like you know you don't understand all traffic has been stopped in the city like in, in addition to all the chaos that's going on like there, nobody's getting through anywhere right, and uh, and I guess they also called an ambulance and a doctor to kind of check on her so. That's really what the first half of the episode is about. It's about uh, Krabka going and saying, hey, listen, I was hired as an assassin. Now, you know, I'm supposed to be with these assassins taking out the Phantom Troop. And he's like, yeah, but that was, you know, under the presumption that uh, my daughter would be away safely already. Please stay here by your bedside until I tell you otherwise, you know. So Krabka grudgingly agrees. And uh, and that's kind of how things go in the first half of, of this episode, you know, or close to the first half, I, I would say. We check in, uh, you know, we check in briefly with some of the kind of mafia heads and everything else. We find out that the Phantom Troop has pretty much cut through about 2,000 members of the mafia, you know, bodyguards, hired hitmen, whatever, right? And um, and then we wind up getting, uh, Karapka winds up getting some, uh, get, gets temporary leave, you know. Uh, Light and Estrad gives him permission to go and basically patrol the building, right? So as Karapka's walking around, he runs across some of the uh, the mafia members that have kind of all been holed up and told to stay in this in this room, you know. And they're all bitching and complaining they can't have their guns, they can't have their this, everything else. And Karapka just kind of keeps walking around, he's searching the building. He gets a call uh, from Gone, and, you know, Gone's been calling him for a little while, but he finally picks up. And Gon and Killua are like, dude, you know, come on. We know we, we got captured by the Phantom Troop. We know you're the chain years. We want to help you out, you know. And Karapka's basically just like, are you crazy? You know, he knows how strong they are and uh, and doesn't want anybody, of course, to sacrifice themselves or go to their certain death because of him and basically tells them to screw off. You know, Killua gets pissed, man, because Killua's like, you know what? Screw you. We're going to help you anyway because we have some information. And, you know, Don't you want to know where their base is? And he's like, don't worry. I got my own resources because, you know, he's got Ahsoka in his back pocket, you know. And, uh, and keep in mind, too, that so far uh, we've seen Hisoka once, uh, twice in the last couple of episodes, and he's kind of just been standing from a rooftop, like, just looking down upon the destruction that's that's taking place, you know, uh, from all the Phantom Troop members. He hasn't been participating yet, you know. And uh, But he, Hisoka's very sneaky, you know, and uh, there's actually an episode named Hisoka's Sneaky <laughs> at the beginning of this, and, and he is. 
So anyway, um, what winds up happening, though, is we get to, as these uh, mafioso-type guys and whatnot are bitching and complaining about wanting their guns back, all of a sudden Silva and Zeno appear, right? And, uh, and these dudes obviously are the, these are the cream of the crop, the, the top of the food chain as far as assassins, the head of the Zoldic family, right? So they appear, and again, I mean, Silva's just this big imposing character because he really does look like a vampire on steroids. He's got like the silver hair, he's got like the very light or white skin, very pale looking, but he's just buff as shit, man, you know what I mean? Just looks like he's just jacked up on roids. And then you've got Zeno, man, and he's just got that cool Mr. Miyagi Fu Manchu look, but he comes in there and tells everybody, basically tells everybody, shut the fuck up, okay? He says, listen, there's already a Phantom Troop member in the building, right? And if I wanted to, even with you, with you fully armed, I could take out this entire room in seven seconds, right? So, and that's just me, you know, and here's this dude, he's 90, 105, who knows how old he is, you know? So he basically just tells him, just shut the fuck up and let us handle this, right? So as Karapka goes and looking around the building, uh, he winds up coming upon and just can kind of feel this essence or this force and what have you from behind the doors to like this ballroom. And as he's about to go in and, and investigate and see, because now he knows there's a Phantom Troop member in the building and he's trying to go in and find him, right? He doesn't know that it's Krollo, he just assumes, whatever, Phantom Troop, he wants to kill all of them, you know? And uh, he gets called by Light Nistrad right at that right at that moment, and Light Nistrad like, "Come on, you got to get back here and everything else," you know, which he promised he would do. You know, now I don't know why Karabka is still staying loyal to this mafia boss because the whole idea I thought was to get in good with him so he could get close to the Phantom Troop, and he could obviously you know make them pay for you know the the Scarlet Eyes and and taking out and obviously killing uh, his you know his his clan, much of his clan, or maybe they just took the Scarlet Eyes and maybe these people are still alive but they're all blind and without eyes because he keeps talking about how he wants to retrieve all the eyes or maybe it's more of like a just an in, in memoriam type of thing i don't know uh nonetheless Karabka winds up getting called away and decides to actually listen to him right and uh, he's very loyal and, that, and that's great that's a good quality to have so he takes off so then we go and we see and this is great the last five six minutes of the episode this is where i was like holy shit man you can't even handle this stuff it's like you want the truth you can't handle the truth you know so zeno and silva wind up going into this ballroom and, uh, and, and we see Krollo standing there, you know, and I'm just thinking, oh, you gotta be kidding me. These two are gonna go and square off against Krollo. And they do, they wind up going, and I mean, after some brief introductions, and, uh, Krollo, Krollo basically says something to the effect of, you killed one of my members, because if you remember, uh, the Zoldic family, Killua had said that his father told him that they had a hit on one of the Phantom Troop members, you know, a few years prior, whenever it was, but that he gave them the greatest compliment ever, saying that it wasn't even worth the money, the bounty wasn't even worth, the payoff wasn't worth it. So anyway, so you got these two dudes, uh, they, they go and kind of go up in the air, Krollo goes up in the air, and just a beautiful sequence of animations, man. I mean, just absolutely wonderful. And, and they just keep on coming here, because it was just a few episodes ago that we had the fight between Uvo and Karapka, you know? Anyway, this, this shit is off the chain, though, man. They're flying through the air, swinging at each other, hitting each other, and Krollo's trying to fight off two of them, and he's not faring very well. He takes a couple of hits, he's, he looks like he's taking a little bit of damage, one point he hits the ground and Silva comes crashing down like he's going to smash him with a double foot smash, you know, and he winds up moving out of the way. He actually winds up managing to cut Silva right on his arm, and Silva winds up going, everything stops, the action stops for a second, and Silva goes and, and remarks that it's a Ben's knife, and this knife has his poison in it and this and that. He's able to use his Nen ability or something along those lines, it looks like, to go and isolate or get the poison so it doesn't hurt him. Krollo goes and says, you know, first of all, he's outnumbered two to one, okay? And what he winds up, you know, more or less, uh, more or less what winds up happening, it's all a mental battle, you know? Silva winds up explaining to him that that's why he used a knife. He's not strong enough to take them out on his own, you know, that he's trying to, trying to do this to get an upper hand in there. And then Krollo makes, uh, makes mention of, you know, like, uh, just a one milliliter of this, you know, poison or whatever can basically, you know, sedate a whale. So you know that if... If he's still moving, if Silva's still moving, even if he isolated the poisoner, you know this dude's got to be a beast, right? So anyway, we got Silva and Zeno standing side by side, and then Zeno goes and he's just like, you know what? He goes, okay, this guy's a specialist. He can go and he can w watch. He warns him to begin with. He says, Zeno's like, uh, he's almost like next level as far as like mental. I think he can like read people's minds or something. That's what it seems like. Maybe he's just old as fuck and he knows everything. I don't know. He's Mr. Miyagi, right? But he tells Silva, he warns me, he says, watch out, this dude can steal your moves. He can copy your moves, right? So then he goes and he says, well, you must be a specialist and blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, he's a specialist and he can go and he can use, copy other people's moves, use them, and then, um, you know, and then obviously throw them back at him, so to speak. Use his move, use their own moves against him, right? So as uh, Zeno and Silva get ready for a battle and whatnot, and Zeno goes and says, listen, I'm going to go and when I lock him into place and I tell you to, you need to go and kill him. Do not hesitate. 
I don't care if you take me with him, you need to kill him. That's the deal, okay? And so Silva's like, okay, understood, you know? And apparently these cold-hearted assassins, that's cool. You can just be like, whatever, man, if I gotta kill my father, so what? Good payday, we gotta, you know, we gotta keep the Zoldic family name in order over here, and we're getting paid, so, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> who cares if we kill one old man with a Fu Manchu mustache? Anyways, I don't particularly agree with it, but I, you know, obviously they're dedicated to their work and they want to have a good family name. So, um, as this shit's about to go down, uh, he goes and pulls out this book. Krollo goes and pulls out this book that he has. And what it is, is that he's actually a conjurer. Uh, that's what, uh, well, at least that's what he says. His ability is a conjurer, but his specialist ability that he has or that allows him to... He can actually take an insp instead of just using a move set or a move and then it being gone when he goes on to the next one or however that works, it being lost. He can actually go and steal them and store them in his book. And Zeno winds up saying, as long as he has the book open, right, he can actually utilize that move or that move set, you know. And he's got this cloak flying around and everything, kind of almost like protecting him. So Zeno goes and comes at him with this badass dragon. He conjures, it looks, like a, it looks like this purple, like almost like electrical sort of mist dragon, right? And this thing's just going flying around and he's trying to go and keep him at a distance because he notices that Krollo is not going on the offensive at all, but he's slowly trying to work himself closer to him so he can get in closer, maybe steal an ability, maybe look for an opening, I don't know. This is all mental as well as physical, this battle. That's what I love about this series, man. But as the action gets hot and heavy and whatnot over here, and this dragon's going and chasing around, and Krollo's trying to dodge it and this and that, Krollo even goes and he says, he's like, man, you know, he pinpointed my ability exactly, you know. So I think it was, I think it's very much like uh, either either Zeno is this keen observer of detail, or he just really, really is able to have like that next level ability where he's almost able to just like look into people's minds and perceive things, you know. I don't know which one it is. I don't care if it's a combination of the both. Doesn't really matter. I'm sure people will let me know in the comments down below. Uh, many people usually let me know when I make a mistake and I said this or I said that. But even when they were on their way up there, uh, it was funny because Silver, Silva and Zeno were talking. And he's like, I'm going to have to use N. And, you know, Zeno was like all pissed off, you know. And and, <laughs> and Silva's like, you know, the building is 100 meters and this and that. Are you sure you can handle that old man? And he's like, yeah, I could handle three times that if I felt like it. So Zeno is basically just, he's at that point where he's like old and tired and shit. And he's just like, I can go next level all the time, all day, every day, right? But he doesn't need to, you know what I mean? He's like, only if I need to. So, um, nonetheless, though, the episode just, I mean, it, the action is just insane. The dragon winds up eventually being able to grab a hold of and kind of pin Krollo back. Zeno closes the gap between them and grabs him and locks him into place, it looks like. And it, that's the opening that he was he was telling Silva about that he's waiting for. When I hold him in place, you got to take him out. So he says, now, right? Silva goes up in the air and shit, and he conjures these two huge, like, purple balls of, like, electricity and just, like, evil and, like, Zoldic family fucking whatever energy. And he's just, and then the episode ends with him going, boom, and, like, throwing those balls of just explosive freaking atom bomb energy at you know, uh, what's his face, at, at, uh, at Kroll. What's that? I can't forget his name, right? I'm just so excited about it. And then you go and you kind of just see, like, the shot from outside the building. So well done, you know, like in a movie. And, I mean, this really is. It's like a big-budget action movie when you see this stuff. And then you go and you get all, you know, the explosions and everything's kind of just rocked. I mean, and then you're going to go see it from the perspective of a couple other people. Like, what the hell was that, you know? <laughs> so, and that's how the episode ends off. So, I got to get done over here so I can see what the hell happens. Because I got to see if Krollo got killed, if he got hurt, if he got maimed, if Zeno's still alive. I like that little old man, you know? Um, my episode question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is... What are your thoughts on uh, I just I just on the battle itself that we've seen between Krollo and then of course uh, against Zeno and Silva? Uh, I didn't expect it to happen. I didn't expect it to happen this quickly anyway. And uh, boy, man, is it is it good? But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one. So if you could follow me on my other channel, as well as Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, that'd be swell.